Fill to Capacity, Crazy Good Stories and Timely Topics, Podcast for people too stubborn to quit and too creative not to make a difference, inspiring, irreverent, and informative. Stay tuned. Hi, I'm Pat Benincasa, and welcome to Fill to Capacity. Today's episode, Rediscover the Power of Play. And my guest is Mike Montague. Okay, now a little bit about Mike. He is a podcaster, writer, karaoke host, MC, DJ for live events, including opening for Billy Idol and Frankie Valley. And he has a terrific podcast called Playful Humans. The focus is to help adults get back to playing and reclaiming that kid-like wonder that happens when you play. He interviews adults doing things, gosh, most people just dream about doing, and they earn a living doing it. So welcome to the show, Mike. Hey, so great to be here. I'm excited to uh, be on the show and and talk about cool, creative stuff. Great. Well, I've listened to several of your podcasts, and it's clear these people love to play, but it's it's hard to listen to your podcast without laughing. I'm just going to tell you that. I mean, two minutes into it, I find myself grinning and giggling, and I can't help myself. So the big question is, as adults, we've lost our ability to play, you know, to be like that kid in the sandbox. How did this happen? And Mike, can they really get it back listening to your podcast? Well, probably not just listening to the podcast. (laughs) I try to inspire people enough that they get at least a little glimpse or a memory of what it was like to be a playful human when when you were a kid. And so, uh, yes, you're right. I start out with dad jokes and uh, I have a fake sponsor for every episode. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it it might be brought to you by uh, corduroy pillows. Corduroy (laughs) pillows are making headlines across the country. Um, And so we like to have fun and we like to talk and remember, you know, what we did for play as a kid, Mm -hmm. why that was so powerful. And then talk about people who haven't lost it or people that have refound it because Mm. it is possible. And then hopefully that'll give you a little insight into how you could do that for yourself. Yeah. Uh, And a lot of adults get messed up with a really lot, a lot of bad advice, but also a lot of marketing hype, right? A lot of people are trying to make money off of us as adults and they're telling us to work harder or to buy more things Mm -hmm. or that you know, a lot of other stuff will make you happy, like social media or television. And that's just not true. Yep. You know, reality TV isn't real. Social media isn't social. <laughs> we have to remember what it's like to actually be happy and engaged in the world. Was Has play always been an important part of your life? Or did you lose it at some point and rediscover it? Uh, that's a question I ask everybody on my podcast. I would say... Yes, for the most part, it's always been a a part of my life. I was lucky to have a really blessed childhood Mm -hmm. growing up in the suburbs of Kansas City. And uh, we had a pool in the backyard. Our our neighbors got together every weekend for water volleyball or soccer in the backyard and playing with kids in the neighborhood. And it was just a really, really great time. And then my parents uh, are one on each side. So my mother's side uh, her great grandmother was a or grandmother was a piano teacher and okay. they're all very artsy and we had like designers and musicians and stuff on that side of the family and my dad's side was all business they're all like salespeople, driven business hmm. people they um uh, make a ton of money and they're really serious and uh it was all guys on that side of the family too which was really interesting yeah. uh and i felt like for a while that i ended landed in the middle that I could okay. speak business and I could be serious, but I was also very playful, but on both sides, they encouraged us to be ourselves and to follow our passions and to figure stuff out along the way. Uh, my dad's very entrepreneurial in his mm-hmm. business too, which always kind of means being creative and figuring out a way to make something work rather than 
fitting in and following the rules. So I got to be a DJ right out of college. I got on the wow. top 40 radio station here in Kansas City. <laughs> so I was Romeo on Mix 93.3 and uh, playing Kansas City's number one hit music station. And uh, we had a ton of fun doing that. I DJed, you know, mentioned Billy Idol and stuff, mm -hmm. but uh, radio pays very poorly. So mm -hmm. I got into advertising from there, which got me into marketing. And now I do public speaking for uh, large corporations and stuff where I kind of, I kind of straddle the line. It's definitely yep. a big business. I train for companies like Uber and Thermo Fisher Scientific and really huge companies where it's definitely corporate, but I'm also the guy who's on stage and playing and I'm having fun with people and joking. I host game shows as well on the side. So <laughs> I have two game shows tonight I'm looking forward to and and really have always had a playful side of that and definitely a creative side. I've always written and produced and created stuff. Mm. I wish I had more artistic talent like my, my cousins, but uh, most of the graphic design and web design I did was like to make the marketing possible, not really to express myself or anything. No. Although I can Photoshop a friend into a funny photo when called up. Now, Mike, you cannot corner all the creativity, okay? You have creative gifts. It's obvious. The graphic design part, leave a little bit for other people. Okay, Mike? Uh, you got music and, and art for sure. Uh, <laughs> I appreciate it so much. I cannot do it at all. Well, that leads me to, um, on your podcast, you have a range, and I mean a range of people who play professionally. Uh, the laughter yoga advocate, the Lego <laughs> serious play facilitator, the corporate action hero, and comedy sword fighting stuntman. Now, all your guests really stand out in terms of pushing play to the max and doing work that really makes them feel happy and fulfilled. What's the takeaway here, Mike? I think the takeaway is that it's possible. Uh, it's possible for everybody. So I know you're an artist. I, I've interviewed some really great artists from around the world that have galleries and all mm -hmm. kinds of stuff. I've interviewed world famous tattoo artists uh, mm. and things that have found a way to make money that way uh, or graphic designers. But I feel like the commonality is we think sometimes in art that you're either a struggling poor artist or you're a world famous artist yep. and you know you have massive success and you sell millions of books or you make gigantic movies and things. But what most people miss is what I call this middle-class creator. There's a middle mm. class of people who are playing for fun and can make a life doing Lego, uh, doing uh, <laughs> laughter yoga, like you mentioned, <laughs> like doing comedy, doing podcasting, doing mm -hmm. blogs, doing funny videos on YouTube. There are thousands and thousands of people across the country that are uh, public speakers yep. or entertainers. I know jugglers and magicians and... I've just interviewed everybody that has all kinds of things and they're not doing bad. I mean, right. Yeah. You, you wouldn't recognize their name. You might recognize mm -hmm. their work. Some of them have been on famous TV shows or, or had uh, cool things happen, but most of them are making six figures. They're living a really wow. good life. They do mm -hmm. what they want. They, they play how they want and they work for who they want and choose the projects that they want. Yeah. And I think that for me is really the goal, not to become, you know, Tom Cruise or, or somebody that's mm -hmm. massively famous, but to have a life doing what you love. Oh, that's it right there to be able to do that. I know I, I've taught uh, high school art and college art and I have a studio. And one of the constants in my classroom was it was joyful that those kids, mm -hmm. when, when a student is really frustrated, I say, what's the problem? I don't really like this painting. Then why are you working on it? Well, I got to turn it in for a grade. I said, whoa. Take time. Let's back that up and talk about it. That joy factor in what we do is so important. And that really does come through. Now, you did. Uh, I love that. And it reminds me of my favorite quote. Howard Thurman said, don't ask what the world needs. Ask what makes you come alive and then oh. go do that. Because what the world needs is more people who have come alive. 
Like we don't need more robots. We can build robots now. We need human beings that are alive and joyful and passionate about their work. And I, yes. I love what you said. And even in teaching, I find a lot of people that that teach and practice and do their their work on the side yep. of whatever it is. Uh, but the thing for me is if you can make enough money to keep doing it, yes. then that's all that matters. Yep. Or maybe you got to make money doing something else and do this as a hobby on the side. But don't drop the passion because that's the magic that keeps everything going and life worth living. Oh, my God. Yes. Totally agree with you. Now, in one of your episodes, you did something that was totally amazing. You forced yourself to do only one thing at a time. So watching Netflix, you weren't scrolling. If you were running, you weren't listening to music. You did only one thing. So in other words, you allowed yourself to be bored. What does yeah. being bored have to do with play? Please enlighten me, Mike. Wow, this is one of the best questions I've ever gotten. Thanks for, for this oh. one, Pat. Uh, I did a dopamine detox at the uh, end of the summer in 2021. So okay. kind of from the pandemic and everything, I think in 2020, we're all surviving. I kind of let some bad habits creep in, mm -hmm. you know, gained the COVID-19 uh, pounds and uh, mm. <laughs> got everything, you know, a little out of whack. And I've done this throughout my life where I've gone without social media for 30 days or done a email, like where I only check email once a day or, or limit yep. television and, and stuff. But yeah, I decided to focus on my creativity and rebuilding my energy that what I found was like, if you're watching TV news about the pandemic, and you're watching stressful TV shows, most of them about like rape and murder or yeah. serious health issues and things like if you're that's what you're feeding yourself, you're not going to have very much nutrition left for you. No. Right. Um, uh, and so, yeah, the goal was in this uh, to do a few things. Number one was only one thing at a time to wow. stop the overstimulating hmm. thing. So if I'm on a podcast, I'm just going to be on a podcast. I'm not going to check my phone. If I'm out with my friends, I'm going to talk with my friends. And I made a couple of rules for myself, like um, no texting or emailing if I could call the person and like, wow. uh, and no social media. So I change the password to something I couldn't remember uh, on all of my social media accounts. So that if I wanted to get in, I had to reset the password and redo a whole thing, but it would at least cause me to stop and think about it for a second yeah. and not just mindlessly stay logged in or, or checking it and scrolling stuff. So uh, I tried to focus on books and things that were real mm -hmm. and food that was real instead of anything that was manufactured and fake. So okay. rather than watching football that fall, I tried to go out and play soccer and, and basketball. And so it, I think we forget how much of our stuff has been simulated or what I kind of call faux play. Yep. Yep. You know, you're watching people play on television. They might be doing American Ninja Warrior, but you're not. Uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. You're sitting on the couch doing nothing and probably have at least two, maybe three screens in front of you in between that too. So that was a really huge time for me. And it really led to this breakthrough with, hmm. with Playful Humans and getting my podcast up and running. And I'm writing a book. I'm getting really excited to finish this week. And uh, you can't do that and multitask at the same no. time. You can't no. write. You can't connect with people. You can't do really anything meaningful if you're distracted by a bunch of, of stuff. Somehow it sounds like you stepped out of mediated culture. Yeah. In the sense that everything we do is mediated. Like we can't go to another country or do something without the phone documenting everything that's happening. It's like we're so busy making sure that everybody knows I'm in France and I'm eating this and then I'm going to go here. It's like everything we do has Comedians to be. Comedians and musicians hate it because more people are filming the concert than are actually yes. dancing and singing along to the songs. Like it's nuts, right? It is nuts because what we're doing is agreeing to step out of life yeah. so that the event becomes secondary to the documentation. Like, huh? <laughs> so Yeah, it's so crazy. And I understand taking a good photo and stuff when when you have a special moment yeah, so that you yes. can remember it. But yeah. there's a difference, yeah, I think between experiencing life through a screen and experiencing it for yourself. And I want to circle back to one other one. The Please. hardest one for me was just eating 
that I'm so used to turning the TV on, yeah. and endlessly eating or doing something else uh, and multitasking while I'm cooking the food. And it really made a huge difference for me to just enjoy the smells and the sounds wow. and the, you know, uh, of cooking and the food itself for hmm. 20 minutes, like give your mind a break and just focus on enjoying the food. I got so much more pleasure out of the, the meal and I came back like so much more refreshed and, and focused. Wow. Very nice. Now, in a New York Times article, Kristen Wong wrote about jobs being precarious, livelihoods are at stake, and we're still fighting a deadly pandemic. And she said, play is low on our list of priorities. Quote, we're living in a world that's more conducive to anxiety than playfulness. Mike, what are your thoughts about that? Two things. I try not to bum people out, but okay. the reality is really sad. So all of the numbers for depression and suicide and mm -hmm. anxiety and stress are going up yeah. and all the numbers for happiness, fulfillment in your jobs, like uh, love and relationships and, and all kinds of health uh, is going down. Mm -hmm. So that's not a good trend for, for humanity. Yeah. But my goal is to really flip that on, on its head because I have good news here. So the flip side of that is exactly what she was mentioning there, that the studies on play, there's been a ton of research on this mm -hmm. and play makes you happier. Uh, mm -hmm. When you're happier, you smile more. That makes you more attractive. <laughs> yep. Uh, when you're more attractive, you have uh, more options in relationships and you have more sex <laughs> and you have uh, <laughs> yeah. more fun. You yeah. More job opportunities, like all kinds of good things start snowballing yep. when you first focus on your enjoyment and your joy in yourself. So salespeople that are, are playful sell 35% more than salespeople who are not. Mm -hmm. uh, people that are producing in other types of, of um, positions, all of that seems to go the same. There's a, a really cool study that I love. It's my favorite about overwork, that if you work for more than 60 hours in a week, for more than six weeks in a row, your body wears down so much hmm. that you would actually produce less than if you had just worked 40 hours that whole time. Wow. So over a six week period, you wear yourself out and burn out and slow down and your brain stops working and your body breaks down to the point where you're, work you're actually producing less than if you had just taken a break, gone outside and played. Uh, you know, work your eight hours, call it a day and go have fun with your family. And you would actually be more successful that way. And I think that's, what's really cool. And that's, what's missing in our society is somebody yep. being the voice of play, telling people, no, it's actually okay. And even if you're for profit and you're in a commercial business, you want your employees playing because they'll be more creative. They'll be more confident. You'll have a better work culture, which leads to better teamwork. Um, they will have better physical conditioning and yep. you won't have as many sick days and burnout and you won't have people quitting. And all of that actually leads to the bottom line. So even if you're trying to measure or influence the stuff that is stressing people out, you still want to play. Now, okay. So we have people listening to this podcast that maybe they're holding two jobs, single parenting, caretaking, and they're listening and saying, are you kidding me? You're talking about play? I barely have time to sleep. What What can you say to folks that are really, uh, really stressed in terms of work life, care life? What do you say to them? I think there's a few things here. Look, number one is it's not easy. There is kind of sort of a, a bare minimum of uh, requirements in life to keep yeah. yourself, you know, uh, employed, insured, uh, housed, yeah. clothed, yep. fed. Uh, and those numbers keep going up with inflation and other things. So first of all, I I hear you and I understand and it, it can be rough, uh, especially when you're in it. And I've been there. Yep. So I mentioned that I was blessed. I was also in radio, so broke, my power was turned off. I, I wouldn't know how to eat mm -hmm. or uh, try to go on a date with $10 and figure out how to make uh, that work. You know, like 
<laughs> it's rough and, and yeah. stressful. I've been there. Uh, I had tax problems and, and stuff where I didn't have the money for it. And mm. uh, entertainment sometimes, you know, you're 1099. So you got to pay all the taxes at the end of the year. And mm -hmm. I didn't save enough and, and got, you know, a big tax bill and like that. That stinks. But yeah. here's a couple of things that, that we know. Number one, if you don't take care of yourself first, you can't take care of anybody else. So even if you got the family and kids, if you burn out, if you uh, stress yourself out, you end up getting a divorce, it only makes it worse. Yeah. Um, even suicidal things and depression can creep in. That's definitely no fun and no help to yeah. anybody. That's not yeah. gonna make your life better. Yeah. So there's also, I would say, a minimum level of happiness and fulfillment that you need to find in your, your life. So hmm. even if it's only a few hours, you don't have to spend money. That's what people miss, I, I think. And that's why play isn't a bigger priority in our society because nobody's making money off of it. Ah. You can walk to the park for free and you can enjoy some outside air or you can you know, find mm -hmm. a ball or you can borrow exercise equipment or do other things that cost no money whatsoever and, and find happiness in your life, especially the creating and, and stuff that you do, right? There's yep. lots of ways to, oh. to do art or create yep. something. And um, it doesn't cost you anything to write a book, but it, it costs you to buy one or, or to watch mm -hmm. TV, right? Mm -hmm. So cancel Netflix, cancel cable and find out how to create more than you're consuming. And you'll find a lot more uh, fulfilling life and a lot more happiness. And then finally, I would say, uh, circling back to what I said before, that you might find that you're actually more profitable and you're more valuable if you're doing jobs that require creativity, that require oh, yeah. play and joy and connection with other humans. So mm -hmm. I would consider looking at careers that can't be automated, that can't be outsourced overseas, that, that can't be yeah. um, afforded at, at minimum wage, like find something that makes you special to stand out mm. from the pack and that makes you more valuable to employers. Yeah. So can I share my example real quick? I felt oh, like go I talked for it. For a while. Go for it. Yes. So for me, um, in my 20s, I was a web designer. I happen to be good at computers. I mentioned that I built over 200 websites and, and I made pretty good money for that. But I was also on the radio and a DJ at the, the same time. So I don't know how many DJ web designers there are, but <laughs> there's not many. I've, I've met a few. But also my dad was a sales trainer and I got into sales training and started reading all of their books and studying that for like 20 years uh, of my life. And when you put those three things together, I haven't met another DJ web designer sales trainer. <laughs> so I got a job for our, our corporate office designing the online learning programs mm. where I would appear in a video in an mm. online course teaching sales training, using all three of my background things. Nice. And here's the secret, Pat. I made three times as much money as I did at any one of those jobs individually because I was three times more valuable with that mixed skill set. So when you find something that only you're good at, when you're doing something that other people can't do, like creating something yep. out of nothing, that is where value and fun and fulfillment comes into the career part for me. Oh, that's a great example. It's joyful. <laughs> yeah, well, and I get to have fun doing all the stuff that I like, oh, and I try to outsource and delegate all the stuff that I don't like. There you go. This is awesome, too. So you talked a little bit about your family. I've got to tell you, my grandmother, Rafaela, all four foot 11 of her, was the most joyful, playful person I have ever known in my life. And she had a lot of tragedy in her life. But you always see her clapping her hands and laughing. And what does attitude have to do with play? I'm so glad you brought that one up, too, because my grandmother uh, just turned 91. Oh. And she is my role model in, in this. And same like you, I think yeah. anybody who is, is that old, like your grandmother, um, they did not grow up in an easy time. We're no. talking about world wars, depressions, yep. like famine. They were dirt poor. Yep. Um, I don't want to tell too much of her story, but a, a ton of health problems yeah. and abuse and divorce yeah. and just all of anything hard that you can imagine in your life. Yep. She's experienced. But at the same time, she is the funniest and, and smartest yeah. and yeah. like such a, a creative lady. She would uh, paint for fun. She painted... Uh, 
stools, you know, like bar stools with yeah. a round seat on top. Yeah. We painted them like different basketballs for us when we were kids, like a basketball, <laughs> a soccer ball, and a baseball. Wow. And um, she painted, you know, for herself. She would uh, love like British comedy. So she introduced me to like Monty Python. Oh, yeah. Faulty Towers and all kinds of good stuff there. But uh, reading comedy, like Dave Barry, there's a, a book back here on my on my shelf from her. She gave me a Dwight Schrute bobblehead from The Office, and just like <laughs> she's always making us laugh. One of my favorite creative stories of hers was she used to see shapes in uh, Cheetos. You know the Cheetos? Oh yeah, uh, yeah. Chip snacks. She would find shapes and have a little Cheeto con collection. Like people see shapes in clouds. <laughs> like this one's a giraffe or this one's a funny shape. And she would set them in old like jewelry boxes as her special collection out in her, her kitchen for people that came over. And she would show them, look, this is Abraham Lincoln and stuff. Oh my God. And then the funny ending to that story is my dad ate the month old Cheeto collection. No. At holiday party no <laughs> of the display cases and the foam padding they were on we have no idea what he was thinking. oh no <laughs> <laughs> but it was hysterical i think for both people it's such a perfect uh story mm. of how my dad is like clark griswold from the vacation movie yeah. <laughs> and my grandma is such a, a creative person but she was my inspiration for that uh, of being a playful human and we would do fake radio shows at, at her house wow. and tape record them or write creative stories on her typewriter and and things that she had growing up remarkable like, she's really remarkable man like oh my god <laughs> what a role model to have uh so like i said i was so lucky to have somebody to model yep. that but I love the point that you brought up that doesn't have to be easy to be playful. And I, I think it's a choice. You, you kind of, you know, you either laugh yep. or you cry. So yeah. I'm pick laugh right? yep, yep. Uh, and try to experience that as much as I can. You know, uh, again, teaching, uh, I've had students that are just really angry or uh, one student in particular would always find the downside of everything. And one day I just said, so-and-so, when you dress for war, you find war. And the room got quiet. And she looked at me, and you could see lights going on. Like, oh. And then afterwards, when everybody left, we started talking about if you're living life to prove how life is going to victimize you or you start your day, how many bad things are going to happen to me today just so I can prove life is this? Or you can wake up and say, this is a new day, a new beginning. What's going to happen today? What am I going to learn? Who am I going to meet? So it always seems to come down to attitude. And I always tell art students, you need attitude. That's what you need. You need you need to go into this world knowing that you have magic in you to make art and to uh, make change. I love that. And I think people explain this a lot of different ways. I, I love what you said about the dress, but the, the modern equivalent of that is really like the search engines that mm. um, if you search for... Uh, war and famine and pandemic news google will give you more war and famine and <laughs> pandemic news if you enter in puppies and kittens and uh you know epic fail videos that make you laugh and feel good you will get more of those and what i think people don't hmm. realize is that all of life is like that if yeah. you go around looking for cool people and fun opportunities to play and connect with them you will find them if you go looking for jerks and people will take yep. advantage of you and stuff, you will find those too. And so, uh, you know, there was the secret and stuff, whether you think it's the universe or God yep. or karma or any of that, the, the fact is it's mostly you and your brain and the way you're putting out in, in your energy into the world. If you're spending your energy yep. looking for bad things, you're going to find them. If you spend your energy looking for ways to play and be a playful human, you'll, you'll find that too. And I promise yep. you the second way is a lot more fun. I would agree with you. <laughs> now, there was this guy, this German guy, Joseph Pieper. He wrote a book in 1948 called Leisure, the Basis of Culture. And he coined a term, total work. And he said, total work, which is the process by which human beings are transformed into workers and nothing else. 
And so we're so busy. Everything is so urgent. We go from checklist to checklist, and we're burrowing down deep into tunnel vision of to-dos. So play is unstructured. It just happens. Mike, can play pull us out of this tunnel vision? A hundred percent. I think it's the only thing that can really, because I've looked, I've tried to lean into it and done things on essentialism and optimization. I did a ton of time management stuff and goal setting. And I, I'm, you can probably tell by now, I'm a little bit of like a self-help uh, addict here a, a little <laughs> bit. And I, I checked it all out. And I think some of those things can make a small difference, mm-hmm. right? Um, if you want to get 10% more efficient and make 10% more money, you probably can. But the problem with that is there's a, a diminishing returns. Hmm? You can only work so much harder. We still have to sleep and eat and rest and and give ourselves time to think and, and stuff. So there's only so much you can do. The other option is to rethink the whole thing. And, and if you can't uh, win the game, change the rules. And so ah. there's this great uh, parable called the, the parable of the Mexican fisherman. Have, have you heard this no. one before? Tell us. So there was an American businessman on, on vacation in Mexico, and he noticed this guy fishing. And over the few days of his vacation, he noticed that he went out in the morning and he he came back and was done around like 10 or 11 every day. And the businessman went over to talk to him and he was like, hey, you know, you're only fishing half the day. If you fished in the afternoon as well, you could probably double your output. And then uh, if you did that, you could buy another boat and hire another uh, person to fish that eventually you could have a, a whole uh, fleet. He said, what are you doing um, the rest of your, your day? You know? And, and the guy said, well, um, you know, I prefer just to, to fish when I, I want um, like have lunch with my wife, take a siesta, play with my kids in, in the afternoon. And uh, the businessman said, well, if you gave that up and you just worked really hard for like maybe, you know, 20, 30 years, you could retire with as much money as you want. You could really scale this thing. And the Mexican fisherman said, well, what would I do when I retired then? And the guy said, well, you could hang out with your wife. You could drink margaritas on the beach. You could play with your, (laughs) and that's exactly what you're talking about. We all jump into this treadmill where we have to earn money because we're busy consuming things. And we got to, uh, pay for a car to take us to the job we don't like to pay for the house uh, that we can't afford and and if you just kind of stop all of that and rethink the game a little bit and you spend your time creating stuff and spending your time in actual play rather than stuff that people have monetized for you yes that you think will make you feel better you don't need that many clothes you don't need really yeah. expensive vacations you don't need really fancy cars You don't need 12 streaming services, (laughs) you know, like (laughs) you can let go of so much stuff that you actually need less. And on the opposite side of things, that even if you want to produce more again, if you're creating more than you're consuming, if you're not a cog in a wheel, if you're creating powerful art and and play and human connections, Mm -hmm. that will earn you better reputations, more referrals. Uh, people want to work with you, you get better job offers and it spirals up as well. And then eventually those cross to where you go, Hey, I'm, I'm doing exactly what I want. I'm working as much as I want. I'm loving life and I'm really working in what makes me feel happy. And that's where the magic is Absolutely. Not in constantly trying to scale and get bigger. You know, I mean, you yep. can look at actors and uh, famous uh, politicians and, and business people that if you're always trying to go for more, when is enough enough? Yeah. When are you going to be like, if I, if I just had a million or 10 million or 10 billion, or you buy Twitter for $54 billion. Yeah. yeah, You could do that. going to be (laughs) enough that you feel happy and fulfilled. Nicely said. Yes. So the ancient Greeks had an opinion about play in uh, Plato's work, the Phaedrus. Phaedrus said, quote, the mind ought to be diverted that it may return to better thinking. Is play that diversion? Can we find moments of play to reset and recharge our exhausted selves? And that's what it sounds like you're talking about. 
Yeah, a hundred percent. I think really it's the only thing that does work. You can sometimes get into a manufactured flow state for a while when you're doing like a repetitive task of some mm-hmm. kind. And uh, there are benefits to that, even like manual labor and stuff where if you're in a real rhythm, you can kind of get into yep. a flow. But what you mentioned there, or, or I guess what the ancient Greeks mentioned was really creative thought, those game changing ideas, yes. the innovation that changes your life, a different way of thinking only happens when you're playful with ideas because yes. play means that it might not work. Play means that uh, you have to experiment a, a little bit. And there's mm-hmm. a great definition of play that I love, which is um, moving between order and chaos. Mm. And I think so much of uh, of our life, we're panicked and stressed and we have anxiety about uncertainty. Yes. So we try to control everything and we try to only yeah. do things that are safe or when we know it will work and succeed. And that's what's holding us back. Mm-hmm. So- Lots of great lines about this. You know, Michael Jordan missed more shots in the NBA than any other player that, that's ever played because he took more shots. Yes. Right? The only way yeah. to be good is to be bad at it first. Yes. Like the only <laughs> way to make the shot is to be willing to miss it. Yep. Uh, and so I think that's kind of cliche advice, but it's extremely true. And some of these cliches are that way because they've been around since the ancient yep. Greeks. Like this yep. isn't a new thing <laughs> for us. It's just that we forgot that if we really want to live our best life, it requires some risk. It requires yep. letting go of control and enjoying what happens. And I, I go back to that order versus chaos thing. Mm-hmm. That's what makes play interesting. Did you know that every mammal on the planet, not just humans, every mammal, like dolphins and dogs, something, they all speak ball. If you throw a ball to a mammal, they will play with it. There really? are rhinoceroses playing with balls. There are bulls playing with <laughs> balls. <laughs> there are, you know, uh, dolphins and seals huh. and otters playing with balls. That when we don't know which way it's going to bounce, it's interesting to us, right? Yes. If you threw a ball and it did the exact same thing every time, you only need to throw it about three or four times and yep. then you're bored. Yep, exactly. It's predictable. But if you got a crazy bouncy ball that has a lot of jagged sides and you have no idea which way it's going, you can do that all day. You have the energy and the curiosity yep. to keep going. And that scales up to your whole life. If you don't know what today will bring, you got to be interested. You got to be aware. You got to be present yep. because something cool's happened. But if you're in the same rut and routine and you're playing it safe and you know predictably that everything that's going to happen in your day, it's boring. You're going to give up. You're going to stop learning. Absolutely. So Mike Montague, now I don't mean to be personal, but you are a playmaking provocateur and your playful humans podcast offers a, a safety valve for stress relief through levity and laughter that in, it encourages unselfconscious delight in play and so in today's world that is called generosity of spirit and I want to thank you, Mike, that what you do is so important. And I want to let folks know you must check out PlayfulHumans.com. Yeah, a couple of cool things there. I really appreciate you saying that. That's awesome. That's what I'm trying to be is the most authentic and playful version of myself and give that to other people. Because I think there are are two things, right? If you give a gift to somebody and that's what I do with the podcast, I feel like is just, I made this here. It's for you. It's free. It's a gift. If you like it, great. If you don't re-gift it to somebody, whatever, (laughs) it's not for you. That's fine. It's a gift. The other one is invitations that I try to focus on inviting other people to play. So a playful Mm -hmm. humans, everybody's invited to join. I feel like it's a, a great, um, message, you know, in our culture today, so many people can get divided and separated. Yes. And yes. what I don't hear when people are fighting for scarce resources and and even in really tough diversity issues is how do we invite everybody to the table? How does yep. everybody get to play together and, and work together? So at Playful Humans, I really want to create a safe space where everybody's invited. It's up to you. You bring your fun, playful energy and you're welcome, but you got to take that action. You, you have to join us there. So a couple of ideas. Uh, definitely subscribe to the podcast since you're listening to podcasts now. I'm assuming you could find this wherever you're listening to this one. And number two is there's a cool quiz on there. Oh, about yes. What kind of playful personality you have. And so 
that uh, I love because you do art, I do performing. Um, I also like to write and other people do puzzles and games. Some people explore outside, some people play sports. None of it's right or wrong. You get to find what play is for you. Yep. And I think that's really what I'm helping people do is discover what their thing is. Don't pick my thing. Pick what your thing is that, that makes you love it. Well, it comes through loud and clear, Mike. And I want to thank you for being a guest on Build to Capacity today. And folks, if you've enjoyed the uh, podcast, please hit the subscribe button. And uh, I, you know, I had so much fun today, Mike. <laughs> Can I do one more thing? I Go think we for need it. A little more fun. Uh, I like to ask everybody if they want to play a game. Do you want? Do you want to Go play a little it. survey? Says with me. Okay. All right, you're in it now. Uh, so you know how <laughs> survey says works. I just dropped the card. Um, so we we surveyed 100 people, and you have to guess one of the top answers. Okay. That they they said. All right. So we asked 100 people to name a public place where you see parents disciplining their children. What do you think this said? I would say um, Target. Yeah, the store. Number one answer. You nailed it. All right. <laughs> if you're listening to the podcast and playing the home game, also park, field, school, playground, or restaurants. There uh, you go. Top list. Um, here's one for you. I pulled out because you're a teacher. Uh, where might a school bus take a student besides school? Art museum. Hey, great. I'll count that. Uh, museum is on here, but also field trip. Number one answer. Uh, sports home uh, is probably should have been the number one answer because you go to school. Or oh, home. yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, zoo and picnic uh, were on there. And last one. Name something that might happen when you get really hot. Oh, I'll find a pint of Rocky Road ice cream. <laughs> well, that's, that one's not on the list. That's a no brainer. Uh, dehydration it's a way more fun answer than these because i got sweat faint or pass out uh blush dehydration and heat stroke none of no no rocky road enough. mike rocky yeah. road it i would think rocky road fixes all of those everything <laughs> it's my go-to <laughs> so much for playing my fun game well thank you again for joining us today mike it was spectacular thank you great conversation take care 